Hello, my name is Aloy Sherlock, and I got a great video for you today. Hand Zimmer Strings versus Spitfire's Chamber Strings with a couple of solo strings thrown in there. Now, why would I do such a thing? Two such different libraries. Well, it's to understand the aperture of sound. And to understand the aperture of sound, first we have to give some definitions. What is, what is a orchestra string section? What size is it? Well, generally it starts off with 46 players and it goes up from there. The Hans Zimmer Strings has a 102 players that I'm actually using here. And then what is a, what is a chamber string? Uh, generally chamber string orchestras start at 14 players and go up to 21 players. Here I'm using the Spitfire chamber strings and I'm coupling these with their solo strings. I've written, I've written a piece here and what we're going to listen to, listen to it twice, it's about a minute and a half long. First time it's going to be with the hand Zimmer strings and then we're going to tear it all apart, listen, uh, figure out how that all works and then second we'll listen again to to the uh, chamber string version. So much, so much to get out of this. All right, let's take a listen to this. Here we have the Hans Zimmer string library and I want to show you the weight of this library. I'm going to use the Bartok Piz here and just between the uh, cellos and the basses. Uh, and this is not a review on the library, but to give you an idea, just really beautiful stuff. And I'm going to go over to here to, uh, uh, when I first put together the basic theme, I wrote it a little bit different. I'll give you an idea. That's what you're hearing on the recording. But when I first did it, it was Well, with this library, because it's so big, that portion with the, with the uh, violas and the second violins doing the uh, eighth notes, it was too much. It was too much. So then I, re I went back and I scaled it back and I could throw. Go... 
because it was, had so much weight to it. Also, notice here with the violins, the violins one, violins one, violins two, I have them on left and right. I really like the way that sounds. Let's see here. Really fantastic. Also, I was using uh, for the horns uh, the six six horns uh, on one uh, six horns on one channel, and then the flute. I was using the uh, uh, the legato performance legato uh, patch. Just really good stuff. Now, let's take a listen to the same piece, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the chamber strings, the uh, chamber strings with the solo strings. Here we go, same piece. Okay, notice now with this last performance, it was completely different because when I tried to copy and paste, it, it just didn't work. So I then started saying, all right, let me, I, I redid everything from scratch. And when I started doing that, this started, I could, I could start doing this. <laughs> Whereas with the Zimmer version, I couldn't do it because it was so large and weighty. And then it allowed me to do other flourishes. So you could start adding stuff. And it was because that the chamber strings are so nimble. Just really fantastic. Also, uh, in the Hans Zimmer strings version, I was usually using the six horn patch. Here, when I used a six horn patch, it was overpowering. So I used the two horn patch. I uh, used the same, the same flute legato performance patch. I was able to do that. And a beautiful thing is, is that the Hans Zimmer strings, the, the chamber strings, the solo strings, the woodwinds, and the brass were all recorded in the same hall. So it had a very cohesiveness to it. Just really terrific. Now, I got some tips for you. Tip number one, write a piece of music and then use your libraries and start interchanging them. If you have a couple of different string libraries, interchange them in the same piece. Why? Well, I found out that what I thought, what I thought was my favorite string library, well, it didn't sound as good as some of my other ones. And by doing that, 
because you spend so much time, you want to learn your libraries inside and out. So write a piece of music, interchange the libraries, and you're going to get a real feel for them and take a listen back to it. Okay, tip number two, number two, number two. Quantize your notes. I know, I know. Some of you are saying, oh, Aloy, I don't want to comp I don't want to quantize my notes because it'll sound me so make me sound so robotic. All right. I didn't quant I didn't quantize all of my notes. I only took certain sections because there were certain sections where I was playing, it was very fluid. But because I had so many different tracks that I was putting on top that if I didn't do that, it just would have just been sounding very messy, very messy. If when I'm recording, I'm using Divisimate, and if I'm only using, uh, if I'm recording three tracks, then I tend not to quantize, quantize because it then doesn't sound right. But if I'm putting on top of those three tracks, uh, five more, six more, however many, ten more tracks on top of it, it's just not going to have a professional sound. Okay. With oh, and you know what? I even might be doing another video because I put in here performance samples. They're fluid, uh, fluid shorts too. I think it was, and then I had to play. It sounded really good, really good. But then I had to play with the pre delay inside of Logic Pro to make it so that way it was it was playing, everything was playing together, but that also meant that I would have to have multiple tracks for different items and my template would have got huge. Uh, that, could, that, could be a, that could be a whole, uh, whole video in itself and I might just do that. Uh, also, if you notice, uh, I'm now using a, a new laptop here. This is an M3 and uh, it's an M3 uh, Max laptop and this thing, is terrific. Uh, it's just amazing. I came from a 2019 16 core, 2019 16 core, uh, and this, my core, my 16 core was having heart attacks when I would start playing. This machine, this laptop, uh, it laughs at me. It, I mean, it, it just laughs at me. I walk by my studio and it'll go, ha, 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 ha. What do you got for me today? And I, I really can't believe it. No matter what I throw at it, it just, it, it just, it's incredible. I, I have never heard the fans come on and the portability of being able, because I do travel quite a bit, the portability of it is just fantastic. Just fantastic. So, a lot going on here, a lot to take in, and uh, I want to thank you for taking your time and being here. It's, it's been a lot of fun making these videos. God bless, take care. Oh, and one last thing. Practice, practice, practice. You'll get a lot better. All right, take care.